What are data scientists? What do they actually do in companies? So grab a cafe and it's story time. All right, now the story with the data always start with a problem in the business. So we have a business question like, for example, how many customers do we have in the last quarter? Now, of course, it is a smart thing to ask the data instead of having gut feelings about the problem. That's why we try to get the answer from the data and for that we hire the data analyst. So now the data analyst is gonna open their tools and start pulling the data from different sources, maybe from the sales system, customers database and product logs. And of course, they are in between many steps, but at the end, the data analyst is building a report, a dashboard, using BI tools like Power BI or Tableau. And of course, using visuals, it is always easier to deliver the message, the story behind the data for the business users. And now, once everything is ready, the data analyst is going to go and present the result for the business users. But now, this is going to scare everyone. The trends is going down, we are losing customers in the last three months, and everyone starts to panic. And now what's gonna happen, of course, one of the managers gonna ask a very important question. Can we predict how many customers are going to leave in the future? So which customers are likely to leave so that we can take an action maybe in order to prevent that? And now if the managers go and ask the data analyst about the predictions, highly likely you will get an answer like this. Well, I have only Power BI. I can only show you the data for the current situation or the history, but I can't make something very intelligent in order to predict things in the future. Future. And my friends, exactly for this scenario, as we get more complicated and advanced questions, we need a data expert, a data specialist in order to solve this problem. And here comes the data scientist. So that means if the business question is all about the current situation or maybe the past and the history, then we need a data analyst in order to do something called descriptive analysis. But now if the question is looking to the future, then we need a data scientist in order to do predictive analysis. And of course, this type of analysis, it is way more complex than the descriptive analysis and for that we need like an intelligence system. Using tools like Power BI, Tableau, SQL will not really help. So now let's see how our friend the data scientist gonna solve this problem. Now of course for each problem we need always data that's why the first step is to collect the data. But now this time the data scientist needs way more data than the data analyst. So anything the company is generating about the customers gonna be important in this phase. So the data gonna get extracted from databases, logs, spreadsheets. So everything that is related to this issue gonna be collected in one place. So now of course all those sources speak different languages and they structure and store their data differently. So that means that the data stinks, the data is chaotic and it's time to get hands dirty. So that means in this phase we are doing data preparations or let's say like pre-processing. Like for example, we can go and merge those files together and the sources using joins. And we have to check the content of the data. If there are a lot of nulls, we can go and replace them with something more meaningful. And another thing that we can do is that we can correct the data types maybe remove the duplicates, maybe they are like columns that are totally useless. Now this step is really time consuming, like you spend 70 time of your total projects only doing those stuff, only cleaning and preparing the data for the next steps. And of course, if you are lucky and have a data engineer like me in your projects, then we're gonna go and prepare all those stuff for the data scientist, so that the data scientist only focus on the next steps. But you don't have this luxury in each company, that's why mostly you'll end up doing those stuff. All right, so with that, we have now a perfect data set that is clean, structured, and ready for the next steps. And now you might get excited and say, yes, now we're gonna go and do some magic, some AI and machine learning, right? Well, I have to stop you there before we touch anything about machine learning. We have to do something very important. We have to explore and understand the data. So we have to do something called exploratory data analyzers. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and open our notebooks and start asking questions. Like for example, how the data is distributed, how we can cluster the customers, is there like any outliers, what are the relationship between like different measures. So with that, you are exploring and understand the content of the data. And this is something that we will not go and share with the stakeholders. This step, we do it for us, the data scientist, in order to understand the data. It's like doctors, they read the charts before doing any diagnosis, right? So it's like a thinking phase. You look at the data, ask questions and make notes. All right, my friends. So now once we have a good feeling about the data and we feel confident, we can understand the data, we can move to the next step. And the next one is very powerful, but yet 
very underrated sadly a lot of data scientists skip this now the scenario is like this the data set that we have is yes clean prepared but the data itself it is very raw it is not yet like an information like for example you could have a column called the sign up date of the customer now this is very raw instead we can make like an extra column we can derive a new column and we calculate the days since the sign up so that means we are creating new columns we are deriving informations from the raw data and we can create other measures like for example the total spent by customers the average session duration so we are creating deriving smart columns that don't exist on the original data set and of course they are not easy to create yet you need some domain and business knowledge that's why we have done the eda phase right and this is very important i really don't get it why some skip this phase the quality of the features that you add to the data set gonna decide really the outcomes of your work so this is what we mean with the feature engineering we are deriving important informations from our raw data sets and now my friends with that we have everything we are ready and it is magic time so it is time to do some machine learning so now the first step is that we're gonna go and split our data sets into two sets the first one is the training set where our model gonna learn from and the second one is a smaller one the test set we're gonna use it in order to test the performance the output of our model because if you train and test at the same data sets basically you are cheating so we don't do that we split the data sets and now the next step is the most important one we have to choose an algorithm an algorithm it's like a set of mathematical steps that describes how to learn from data so basically this is completely mathematics and what we have to do is that to understand those algorithms because we have many different algorithms and we have to pick the right one for the right problem so now once you pick this algorithm the next step is that to go and apply the training data sets on the algorithm so now we are combining mathematics with data so the algorithm gonna go through all your data and start learning from the data sets and this is what we call my friend training a model now that means the model gonna start learning the patterns it's gonna go and find connections and relationships between the data and it's gonna start adjusting itself as well to minimize the errors so that at the end we get something very powerful called a trained model that we could use in order to do predictions for new data now the output of this trained model gonna be predictions so it could be like uh, yes the customer is likely to stay or no this customer might leave soon so we are labeling each customer or we could have like percentage on how likely the customer gonna leave now of course we have to share now this knowledge to the business users what we could do we could import everything the data and the predictions in power bi or tableau and build again like a visual in order to show the final results so as you can see it's always nice thing to communicate with the business users using bi tools because they are very friendly compared to maybe like visual inside your notebook so now we go and present the results for the business users and now they have more understanding what could happen in the future now next what's gonna happen they're gonna plan actions so maybe they're gonna go and launch retention campaign or maybe sense new offers to the risky customers or maybe the sales team gonna go and reach them directly and this is the most beautiful moment as a data scientist you see you are adding value to the company you are not just building like a fancy model because you could you are really helping the business to see what is coming and to do something about it now this sounds like an happy end right you have delivered your work you have improved the business and that's it but sadly the bad news is that we are not done yet so far everything that we have done is manually and as well like we can call it prototyping but now of course this is not one-time activity we have to continue with doing those stuff and you cannot keep doing everything like manually on your notebook and of course the sources keep generating new data every day and maybe there are useful informations that you have to train the model again so now we are at a point where we have to automate everything and make deployments deployments means we take everything that we have done manually so far and put it in real automated system this system of course should not run locally at your notebook we have to run it on servers for example in the cloud 
And of course, what we can do, we can use APIs in order to connect internal applications and system in the company to the model in order to show those scores at the front end. So the whole thing is all about to bring everything that you have done manually at your notebook and to deploy it to professional platform that is fully automated, scalable, highly available and secure and connectable to different applications at your business. And if you are lucky enough and you have ML engineers or ML ops, they have to do those stuff. So as a data scientist, actually, this is not the thing that we do. But if you don't have them, then you have to do it in your own. So now, my friends, everything that you have just shown, like collecting the data, preparing the data, training the model, this is what we call classical machine learning process. Because we are now in 2025 and we have entered the world of pre-trained models, especially the LLMs, large language models like GBT, Cloud, Mistral and others. They are models that already trained on massive amount of data in the internet, on public data like text, website, documents, and they already understand language, context and reasoning. And this is really crazy because before we have like models and we have always to train the models, but now everything is prepared for you. We have models and as well they are pre-trained with massive amount of data. But now you might say, yeah, okay, those pre-trained models are really good but they are very like generic they trained on the public data in the companies we have like special data well it's fine because most of those models they allow something called fine-tuning so that means you can go and pick one of those pre-trained models and train it fine-tune it with the company's data and with that you make it smart with your domain with your business and now you might ask okay why we need all those LLMs well think about it like this if each time the stakeholder or manager need like a new report or new informations from the model and you go and jump and get the data from the model, put it in Power BI and then present it for the stakeholders, this is really slow. So instead what we can do, we let the user have a chat with the model and the users could start conversations like, for example, why are customers leaving a region B? Summarize all the feedback from the cancelled users. So they're gonna have like a chat with the model and this is way better than waiting each time for your Power BI reports. And for that, we could use the help of those pre-trained models, the LLMs. And now, of course, comes the scary part where you ask, if we have all those pre-trained models, why do we have even data scientists? I understood from you we need data scientists in order to train models. But if we have pre-trained models, why do we need them? Well, first of all, my friends, Everything that I have described is the industrial data scientist. So someone is hired in the company to do those stuff. But the one that pre-trained those data models, they are as well data scientists. But they are not hired from the industry. They are actually researchers. And of course, they work in massive engineering teams in big tech companies like OpenAI, Google, Meta, and they do the amazing work of bringing those pre-trained models in the market. And from the other side, of course, we still need the industrial data science for one very important reason. Well, my friends, all those LLMs and pre-trained models, they are trained on public data. And most of the companies, they don't bring the data on public. they all internal, confidential, and even secret. So there will be a lot of business problems that depends on the company's data. And as long as the company Companies protect their data, we're gonna end up in the situation where we need to hire data scientists in the industry so that they either fine tune the pre trained models, or in many scenarios, they have to train from the scratch the models using the company's data. And that's why the data scientist in the industry is very relevant. And to be honest, we have now a lot of work to do because we suddenly exposed to all those pre trained models and we have to fine tune a lot of new models. So I am very positive and excited about it that this can accelerate our work this can open the door for many use cases that i never thought before and believe me we have a lot of work to do so now back to our story now we come to the last thing that we know so far we have something called ai agents so now we are far beyond having a quick conversation between the business user and your model now the user is gonna ask for many stuff like for example how many customers did left last year so what we can do we can have like one ai agent that is using pre-trained model to convert this text into an sql query that goes directly to the database and grab the data and of course show it at the end as visualizations and another thing the customer might ask for example where i find the customer's data in which 
system in which application. So for this scenario, we can use another AI agent that could use as well pre-trained model that specialized on scanning documents. So this time we don't need the company's data, we need the documentations of the company. And now if the customers ask something about the future, how many customers gonna leave next year, then you can use an AI agent that connects to our model that we trained from the scratch that we are very proud of. So if you look to this, we're gonna have a lot of AI agents that are connecting to different models, connecting to different data and sources so of course we have to orchestrate all those stuff and connect everything and that's why we're gonna have like a manager AI agent the top level agent that's gonna get the prompts from the users and decide which agents and models are involved and then respond back to the users or do an action like for example sending an email Whew. well that might be a lot of information for some of you I can keep going and adding stuff to this big picture but it is not fitting anymore all right so this is the whole journey this is everything that I know about data science and what I think about it and if you are enjoying the content and the channel support the channel by subscribing liking commenting this really helps with the algorithm and as well to reach nice people like you but if you are already supporting thank you so much for that now that's it so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video bye bye